Hey guys, so uh, I just want to go over quickly a couple settings that you can tweak in Adobe um, to correct or at least reduce some GoPro SuperView fisheye warping and lens distortion that you see. Um, and, and this can be applied as well to other cameras and stuff too that have like a, an ultra wide or a SuperView kind of style uh, lens setting. Um, but primarily it's going to be for uh, GoPro SuperView. So I'm going to show you a small clip here. This was shot actually on a Hero 7 uh, last year. Um, I don't have this raw video file anymore, so we're going to be editing on a Hero 8 um, 4K SuperView. It's the same, and it, pretty much any GoPro that's shooting in 4K, um, you can shoot in other resolutions as well, but um, 4K with the SuperView setting enables what uh, this example is. <laughs> go into my GoPro settings. These are settings that I use um, for cinematic type of shots. Um, I, I tweak these typically depending on what I'm doing, but um, on that particular shot that you saw, this is what I use. So on that shot, I used an 8, uh, a level 8 density ND filter. Um, and this next shot that I have here, I actually it was using an 8, but I should have used the 16. It was a little hard to, to get it from looking washed out, but the 16 I think it would have looked better. Um, but I use uh, anywhere from an 8 to a 32 for ND filtering. And ND filtering, what that does, along with some other settings, is it creates motion blur, which is important um, for movement and like anything where the scene is changing rapidly. Uh, without motion blur, you're going to be, uh, the viewers are going to see it more like, uh, kind of like a picture book with still images, just one after another, really choppy, it doesn't look natural. Um, so yeah, an ND filter is important here. Uh, for resolution, I shoot in 4K. Um, I don't use 2.7K because I noticed side by side when I was um, exporting both 2.7K and 4K, I export them both in 1440p. Um, and I would notice that the 4K shots, even downscaled to the same resolution for exporting, had higher detail. And I think that comes down to the maybe the way that the GoPro is recording the bitrate or something. Um, it just retains more detail even when scaled down. Uh, if you shoot in 4K. Uh, 30 FPS. I shoot in 30 FPS for cinematic shots. I think it gives a really good feel, but the caveat to that um, is I actually export in 60 frames per second, and I do that because uh, w what it does is it copies each frame and it'll play it twice, but twice as fast. So 60 frames a second, but each frame is copied once. And it gives a really good feel. I think you should, you should definitely try it, even if you uh, shoot in 2.7 or whatever. If you just uh, use 30 frames per second, export at 60 frames per second, it's a really nice smoothing effect. Um, put them side by side and just see the difference. It's pretty cool. Uh, super view for lens uh, choice, obviously. If you use wide or linear, a lot of people will suggest, well, why don't you just use wide or linear if you don't want this lens distortion? Um, because I like super views. Um, field of view. It, it it shows more where the quad's going when you're flying and stuff. Uh, it, it just shows your speed better. It, it's all around, it just seems more appropriate for shooting fast quadcopter scenes. It, now, depending on what you're shooting, obviously, if you're shooting something uh, indoors or something like that where you maybe you want a specific style shot and you want to go for a wide for, or a linear for that matter, that's cool. But for outside, Flying fast, Superview seems to be the best fit. <clears throat>
um, hyper smooth is on a lot of these settings are going to be pretty optional low light na zoom 1x clips off bitrate high shutter 160 uh, 1 over 60 um, and the reason that you would choose 1 over 60 uh, is because you're shooting uh, 30 frames this is always double so if you're shooting at 60 frames this would be 1 over 120 um, EV comp NA white balance 5500k that's, that's my personal starting uh, number there that that's I think 5000 might be default or auto it might be set to auto uh, white balance is something you have to set uh, along with like your ND field did something you have to set depending on the scene settings ISO min and max this goes back to the motion blur stuff uh, there's other videos that explain this better than what I'm going to uh, sharpness medium, color flat, and audio settings are, uh, I believe, default. <clears throat> so that's my GoPro settings there. Um, now I'm going to go into Premiere, and I'll also show you some examples of what I'm talking about with like pancaking that happens, or that's not really probably the proper word, but uh, lens distortion, warping, any of that stuff. Um, I'm going to show you an example here now. So here's here's what I'm talking about. On the bottom, I'll actually make this a little bit bigger. On the bottom is just uh, a screen grab from SuperView. Nothing was changed to it at all. This is the outer edge of the of the shot where the lens would be the most curved, and uh, you can see that this truck looks pretty squished and also stretched out. So it's it's elongated and it's also squished down. Um, and same thing with the trailer. And it's easier to tell with an object like this because you know what the size and scale of this truck is supposed to look like. Um, and, and for other things, like if you shoot in an area with just dense foliage and tons of trees and stuff where the shape isn't totally uniform, this isn't going to be as evident to you. But for me, when I'm shooting next to like buildings and stuff like that where we know what it's supposed to look like and straight lines are supposed to look a certain way they're not supposed to look bowed and warped and stretched and weird um, this is gonna be uh, more for for those kinds of shots so uh, at the top you can see that it it was corrected to uh, be a little bit higher it's not squished down and then also not as stretched and limo like this looks like a limo truck or something it's it's weird um, so and the same thing with the trailer it looks more how it's supposed to look so this is uh, just a small example of that. So next we're going to go into actual the actual settings that um you need to change to make the image not bowed and then also not pancaked. So first we're going to do the bowing correction, uh, where the 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 overall picture just looks like an it looks arced almost. So. I actually have the settings applied, so I'm going to take these off. And your sequence settings here too, these are going to be different depending on what you, what, resolu re what resolution you shoot in. So if you shoot in 2.7, these, these numbers are going to be different for you. It's 3180 by... Oh, I totally lost my 160, right? No, you want 40. No, 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 no. 38.40. Ah, there we go. <laughs> 38.40 by 2160. That's right. Totally lost my train of thought. Um, so uh, this is this is what you're going to see when you put the video in without making changes first. Um, and then for me, I have my sequence settings. Even though I'm shooting in 30 frames, I have it set to 60 here. Um, actually, 59.94. Uh, uh, your GoPro's says 30 but it's actually recording at 29.97 um, so the appropriate uh, frames for changing to 60 would be 59.94 uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your clip um, this clip was from a Hero 8 I don't have the original footage from that uh, clip that I showed in the beginning but it should be the same between most of the Hero cameras or all the Hero cameras I believe uh, with SuperView uh, these settings should be universal in terms of correcting the warp. So first you're going to go to Window and make sure that Effects, Controls, and Effects are somewhere on your screen. So check box these. 
For me, I keep effects on the right and effects controls on the left. Under effects, you're going to go to video effects, distort, and lens distortion. So you've imported your video, you would just drag this lens distortion effect down to your video here. And once you do that under effects controls, you're going to see this uh, lens distortion, uh, these additional settings pop up. So the first thing I'm going to do is correct warping. And uh, if you notice here, I'll grab this. <clears throat> Uh, when you use super view it, it kind of warps the image down like this where it's like a, a like a bubble almost it looks kind of like a bubble but what we want to do is we want to pull that up and and make the horizon flat how it how it would be normally so the settings i use for this um are three on horizontal decentering and two on horizontal prism and that pulls it up on the bottom. You see this this arc down here, and that's kind of counteracting the natural fisheye that Superview gives. So it's straightening the horizon out here. The next thing that we need to do is fix the uh, pancaking uh, on the sides. Uh, to fix that, what we do is we actually just take in the sides uh, a little bit under scale width. Um, it's going to be check this checkbox here that says uniform scale is going to be selected to unlock uh, Changing scale width you have to uncheck it. I choose uh, about 85 to um, I think I've gone as high as maybe 88 if I don't want it to look quite as squished But 85 to me seems to be a good starting point and it's going to depend on the image that you or the shot that you're going for um, in that so 85 but now what we're left with here is some uh, it's not cropping it's actually just uh, since we pulled in the the, the sides um, we're losing some of this pixel real estate here um, on the bottom here this is also not cropping uh, not yet this is just um, where we bowed it upwards. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to crop this image down, but we're not losing our uh, a lot of our pixels on the sides and stuff. Like if you had if you had just straight cropped this photo and and took off the edges where the fisheye was evident, we're keeping the areas that were fisheyed, correcting them, and then cropping that. So um, this next part is going to be dependent on your resolution. So under uh, sequence settings, now we need to change the frame size to get rid of the black borders as well as the arc on the bottom of the picture there. Um, so to get rid of the borders, if you're shooting in 4K, it would be 3264. And I'll show you what that looks like. And that'll chop off the, the black borders on the sides. And uh, if we go back in, uh, so, f so for the vertical side, to get this to 16 by 9, we'll have to take this 3264, uh, go to this calculator, uh, it's called an aspect ratio calculator, uh, plug in your width number, and it's going to give you the height that you need to get that 16 by 9. So we are chopping off um, some of the pixels for height as well. So if we change this down to 1836 now, it goes back to 16 by 9. So yeah, one caveat to doing this is you are going to lose some vertical height on it to keep it in a 16 by 9 ratio. So uh, what you can do is click, click on the video file and go over here to position under effects controls. Grab the second number uh, right here. If I grab that now I can shift this up and down. Obviously, if you go too high, you're going to get a border. And if you go too low, you have that arc. So um, you can adjust it to where the arc's just out of view. Or what I like to do, since I have a little bit more on the top uh, that's getting cut as well, um, I like to frame it kind of in the middle of those two. Um, you can adjust this about, about that much to get where you want the frame. So it seems about right right there. Uh, hit play <clears throat> and if you notice that you're seeing more ground than sky in, in some of it you could grab it there we go 
not too high. If I want to keep most of the top rather than the bottom, then I could just frame it at the top. Yeah, so I have less ground there and more sky. So that's it for uh, the settings in Premiere. And so now what you've done is you fix the the warping, kind of the bubble effect, and then also the pancaking, squishing, and stretching that you see on the sides. Um, typically with like houses and cars over here, I was noticing this, this car was looking like really, really flat and, and stretched, or this truck here was looking really flat and stretched, and the houses, the, they didn't look right. It, it just didn't look natural on, on the edges um, on the side. So that's that's what we we're primarily were fixing. Cropping it back down, you're going to lose you're going to lose uh, not so much of your your picture, but you are losing uh, pixel real estate. So rather than being full 4K, uh, when we export this, I'm going to export it in 1440p. But the detail and most of the image should just, should still be in the shot, and that's that's what I was going for. I didn't want to sacrifice uh, the uh, the edges of the frame where I, I wanted everything just to stay in the picture I didn't want to have to just crop it out or, or chop it off because it didn't look right I wanted to kind of correct it make it look better and then uh, keep that keep that footage so that's pretty much it um, I, I don't make a ton of tutorials so I know this is probably all over the place this is just generally what I I do when I take uh, footage from my GoPro plop it in here I'll throw these default correction settings on and then I'll get into um, adjusting the actual image under you know color color adjustments and making everything look how it should. Um, I know it doesn't seem like that much from from this video because this was shot uh, in the winter months so there's not there's not much color and it looks, it looks the sun's real low it just looks kind of bad but that's it uh, let me know what you guys think um, if there's any settings that you use or tweak to make it look better let me know um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks guys for watching and uh, hopefully this helped you.